certainly from a, a long-term perspective, um, we pretty much know how much capacity is going to come online uh, really between now and 2020. Um, and the, and the, that capacity is only going to grow somewhere between 4 and 5% uh, at a max over the next few years. Um, and of that, uh, probably half or more of that is going to go into China, um, which is a completely independent market from the other developed markets of the world. And so with that limited amount of capacity growth, um, it, it means very good things for pricing. Uh, and that's exactly what we saw in 2015 and, and what I would expect to see for 2016. Now, of the three major quoted companies, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean and Carnival, each of them is a very different story. I mean, Carnival underinvested in for many years, by far the biggest with 100 ships. Royal Caribbean, of course. I mean, Royal Caribbean stock is up 30 percent so far this year or so far the last six months, put it that way. Whereas you've got Carnival up about five, which becomes the better play into next year. Have you had all the gains? in RCL, does Carnival become the better play? I think they're both interesting stories. Uh, Royal Caribbean at this point is, is certainly our favorite of the two. I think over the last couple of years, Royal has shown an ability to, to curb their costs uh, a little bit better than Carnival. Uh, I think if you look at the relative exposure of the two companies, uh, Royal has higher exposure in the parts of the world that are doing a little bit better. Certainly the Caribbean has been uh, the growth engine over the course of, of 2015. If you think about the exposure that Carnival has in uh, Eastern Europe, that's a part of the world that's been a little bit slower. Uh, Royal has a little bit less exposure there. Um, but both, of, I, I think the industry as a whole um, is really more investable than it's been in a really long time. You know, James, I can recall back in, say, 2011 when global oil prices were above $100 a barrel, the managements of these companies were busy saying, well, you know, we're not really that leveraged to the price of, uh, of energy products. How leveraged are these companies, and are they genuinely big beneficiaries of lower oil prices? They're absolutely huge, huge beneficiaries. Um, fuel is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, expense line items for, for all three of these companies. used to be the biggest. Um, certainly, his oil has come down, um, maybe not quite as significant. What's interesting is, um, you know, all these companies went through the decision-making process of whether they wanted to hedge against fuel. Uh, Carnival was the last one to come over, and they, you know, they started hedging right at the time where fuel started coming down. Um, so that's worked against these companies to a degree, uh, but there's no doubt that as fuel falls, that's a big benefit to these uh, cruise companies. And as we saw with Carnival a couple of weeks ago when they gave guidance for 2016, the biggest positive surprise was their fuel, uh, expected fuel expense. Um, sure. And that was certainly well received by the street.